Do you remember when you were little and you used to play make-believe and nothing was impossible to you? When I was a little girl, I had a wild imagination and I had a dream of being on stage and I was never without a microphone in my hand. I used to invite my neighbors and do garage shows on my daddy's workbench and entertain and perform. My sister recently found an old newspaper clipping that said, four-year-old girl donates five dollars to the local hospital. A star and philanthropist is born. My name is Kathleen Hassan. I'm a life coach and a professional speaker and an author. And I've dedicated my life and my work to inspiring others to help them live their wildest dreams. But I've had to work long and hard at it because along the way, my dreams got squashed. Let me put it bluntly, annihilated. When I was 10 years old, my dad died. And then my mother spiraled into a deep depression and we wound up parenting her most of the time. She had a heart condition and she was stuck with five kids. And she was abusive verbally and physically. And then the unthinkable happened. She died when I was 16. And I went off the deep end and got lost in a world of alcohol and drugs and some terrible, terrible things happened to me in my teen years, way worse than my parents dying. And my dreams got buried. But I'm so grateful because everything that ever happened to me planted this burning desire to figure out if there was more to life than just pain. And I'm here to tell you the tools that I have learned that have transformed my life, I now share with others. And there's times that I think, oh, I'm 54 years old. It's too late. I'll never make it. And then those prayers are answered too when God sends me someone like Louise Hay, who shows me it's never too late to live your wildest dreams. But whether you pick me or not, I feel like I've already won because by far my greatest accomplishment has been raising two extraordinary young men. And I want to share with you today a story about my youngest son and how I taught him the same tools of affirmations and visualizations. But in order to do that, I need to play dress up. I'll be right back. When we were little, we played make-believe all the time. Until somebody told us, oh, you're just being silly. That's not true. Well, guess what? It is true. And today I want to share with you a remarkable story about my own son and how we use the power of visualization to help him live his dreams. When he was about 11 or 12 years old, he was in Little League and he had hit one home run. And we actually built a little Fenway Park right here in our own backyard. We had our own mini green monster and we'd have wiffle ball tournaments out back. And whenever my son would strike out in a regular game, he'd throw his bat down and throw his helmet down and storm off into the dugout. And after one of the games, I called him into my bedroom and I said, honey, we need to have a talk. This is totally unacceptable behavior. And instead of focusing on what you don't want, I want you to start to learn how to focus on what you do want. And I started to teach him the power of visualization. I had him close his eyes and picture himself the perfect batting stance. You just got a great night's sleep the night before. Mummy made you your favorite breakfast. Eggos. <laughs> the crowd is cheering your name, just like the plane going by. Ah! The crowd is going wild. You have your favorite batting gloves on, and you are in the zone, baby. So much so, it's like, let the game play you. You are so in the zone, it's as if you can see the stitching on the ball, and your favorite pitch comes in, and it hits that sweet spot on the bat, and you know immediately, it's going, going, gone. You take the bases, you round first, come around second, go around third, and come into home, the dugout clears, everyone's high-fiving you, everyone's going wild. And we did this over and over and over again. The following year, my son hit 33 home runs. 22 during the regular season, 11 more during All-Stars, and he won the home run derby in our town and still holds, till this day, the Little League record for home runs. 
it gets better. This past summer, that same little boy who had a dream, who taught himself how to paint the future in advance, was drafted by the Red Sox. And he's playing in the Red Sox minor league now for the Salem Red Sox. That's why I'm wearing my Red Sox apparel to teach you this amazing story about painting the future in advance. Playing make-believe. Most people say, well, I'll believe that when I see it. And the opposite is actually true. You will see it when you believe it. When you start playing make-believe and putting good thoughts in there, Law of Attraction says that which is likened unto itself is drawn. In other words, what you think about becomes your reality. Thoughts become things. But for most of us, we're focusing on the experience or the bad experience or the thing we don't want or the striking out and we keep focusing on that. And if you always think what you've always thought, then you'll always get what you've always got. So today, I want you to spend some time closing your eyes and just playing make-believe. What is it you want? Stop focusing on what you don't want and start painting the future in advance and putting good stuff in there. And you will begin to start to attract and live your wildest dreams. So until next time, this is Kathleen Hassan, your confidence coach. Bye-bye.